Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, and I'm sorry for a bit of an absence. Uh, I'm still a bit sick, but yeah, for the past week just had a pretty common cold, I think, but you know, doing it tough with some sore throats and uh, nose stuff and headaches and all that. You know how it is. So anyway, I uh, have been slowly yet surely getting through a character which is a Lacerate Raider. And as you can see, the Lacerate has got a new microtransaction. This is the Void Emperor Lacerate. Uh, it does have a Sand and a Blood Stance, though I think you'll only see the Sand Stance in this video because there's pretty much no reason to swap into Blood Stance when doing a uh, full Fizz to Ellie conversion for the build. Blood Stance for Lacerate mostly just gives you more bleed damage while taking away some uh, clear and area potential. So in this version of the build, we are doing full Ellie conversion, going from Fizz uh, to 60% Lightning, 40% Cold. That's with a Fizz to Lightning gem and also the Cold conversion on the tree. I'm running a Savior for a couple of extra uh, MTX farming boys, and then just slapped a foil that I self-crafted in the offhand, though... Um, a Paradox Go is obviously going to be quite a bit better at this stage since it's fairly insane these days, but I like having a fast foil and uh, just proving that it can be done without it. So, still, you know, has to be a decent enough craft, but uh, it's nothing too insane. Uh, so as you can see, Lacerate itself is still cleaning up pretty nice and it does, um, once you get enough attack speed, it does do some good work. The main thing you have to really overcome with Lacerate to actually enjoy it is its attack speed penalty and this is with dual wield Lacerate. I think two hand Lacerate is just going to be uncomfortably slow though. You can do it I'd say with a Void Forge, uh, just not sure you ever really want to. Um, I'm also running Innocence Herald of Ash, that's why you see all these little circles going around and there's honestly not too much more else to say about the um, sort of intricacies of the build. It's a raider, I'm well overdue for doing a raider and it's the first time I think I'm really touching the um, buffed onslaught tree. So I've just got permanent onslaught, there's no buff on the buff bar, but uh, trust me it's there, it's something like 50% attack movement speed. Uh, so completely foregoing the frenzy charge tree so that we don't have to stack frenzies or take frenzies on the tree or anything like that and uh, just doing the exposure route as well. And dodge and evasion is still pretty goddamn good these days. So for the most part, this character has had uncapped resists while I've been working on gear and uh, like 3k life for a lot of its existence and running in abysses. And with all that said, I hardly ever get hit and hardly uh, have died at all because um, you just don't ever get hit thanks to that amount of dodge that you get from uh, just the raider tree plus um, phase acro and acro, and then as you saw, one hit there uh, from an 83 safe house. Um, does kind of hurt, but Wind Dancer also prevents a lot of damage too. Still a bit of fine tuning to go, but uh, what you see so far is what you get. Uh, Lacerate's performing fairly well, though um, probably get better results potentially with some other skills. Either way, the MTX, actually there's the um, blood version of the MTX, no reason to do it there, but uh, it's just a bit of extra damage with blood and sand. So yeah, either way, it's feeling pretty good. I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit, and I do want to show you what I've put into the character thus far. So here's the current character level 89 Raider. Oh no, I feel my power going out. Bit of a joke against uh, something Quinn did in one of his streams. Uh, in any case, Raider, like I said, one of the first times I've done the uh, Onslaught sort of tree, and it feels pretty damn good with the uh, just permanent Onslaught, not needing to rely on a flask and having it up like all the time, even in town and all that. Uh, so it's just a bunch of extra onslaught effect and then some um, chance to evade during that as well. And then also, of course, going the phasing, which is quite a lot of extra dodge to uh, attack and spell. And then um, the uh, sort of permanent uh, exposure to all three elements um, to dudes nearby. So with phase acro, you've got quite a lot of dodge to begin with. Uh, we have 55 attack dodge, 55, 45 spell dodge. Uh, our chance to evade isn't huge, but I've also got um, blinding on hit on enemies. So that is still pretty reliable for avoiding um, attacks. But then Wind Dancer kicks in um, for a big or less damage taken if you haven't been hit recently. And then when you have, a um, bit more evasion at that point. Uh, so yeah, even with Abyssus, uh, it just 
seemed like a no-brainer play since I'm basically never getting hit anyway. Fuck them. Why not take more damage? Uh, and then otherwise, there's nothing too special going on. Running a savior. Once again, you can only have one of these because uh, it'll create two clones uh, and it just doesn't stack. So you can't have four clones instead. So you run a savior and then you have something else in your offhand. And the typical thing people do is Paradoxica. I was rolling a foil and got flaring of celebration. So the fizz and the attack speed um, just through alt crafting and then decided to uh, imprint a few times until I got something usable. And in this case, it's a bit of extra cold damage. So not too shabby. Uh, could obviously go a bit bigger with imprint um, rerolls. But uh, I really like having a fast foil, so that's where um, I started with. Uh, we then have just the usual suspects in a build like this. A nice crit chest. Uh, extremely easy to roll these with harvest at the moment. Just re-roll attacks. Um, you know, any sort of attack roll. Got another one marinating that I might instead. Actually, no, I already bricked it. Uh, yeah, got another one I'm working on just in case I can make it better. Uh, but yeah not too hard to uh, make respectable attempts at these through harvest uh, we then got an amulet with some uh, extra lightning damage uh, it's kind of important to have lightning here instead of cold because I am trying to balance through Trinity uh, Trinity only needs two elements rotating doesn't need three elements once again um, so as long as you are attacking and sometimes your biggest hit is going to be one element and sometimes your biggest hit is going to be a different element, then Trinity will be up at all times. And as you can see, I'm pretty well balanced between cold and lightning. So there will be quite a lot of uh, times that lightning hits harder and quite a lot of times that cold hits harder. Though currently with my taste of hate up, it makes the lightning quite a bit tougher for... Um, the foil over here to kick into effect but for savior it should be pretty reliable still keeping up trinity a lot of the time whereas if i went cold on this uh, amulet as well then it probably gets um almost impossible to keep trinity up at that point i think uh so that's something to note that you if you're trying to do something like this you can't go too far out of balance um with which extra early damage sort of mods you get so the links, uh, the links over here are Lacerate, um, Multi-Strike, this one has extra attack speed as a quality, uh, early damage with attacks, Pulverize, and this is uh, just a bit of extra area effect, uh, then running Trinity, which is extra attack speed, and then Fizz to Lightning, which gives you extra conversion. So instead of the usual 50%, it's 60%. So we've got 60% Fizz to Lightning here, and then uh, another 40% Fizz to Cold over here. That's 100% conversion. Uh, and you try and stack a bit of attack speed just so that it doesn't feel horrible getting that many multi-strike hits out. Multi-strike does feel pretty good so that it can you know, change targets and all that sort of shit. But as you can see, once we got this down, even with our protectors up, for example, and uh, blood rage, this is um, still quite a long time to get all of your attacks out and um, hold yourself still. So... That's why we want to try and get a decent amount of attack speed in. Uh, then running my assassin mark ring for the league, though I still think I want to try and make something a bit nicer. Uh, a mark of the elder, which um, still needs a bit more quality on it. Um, gloves with focus craft for attack speed, so that during um, certain boss fights and stuff we can go even more ham. But uh, that's by no means necessary. And they're just temple mods for crit as well. Uh, belt that I crafted with um, some pristine, pristine prismatic um, catalysts on it to begin with. And then it was just chaos spam, I think, in the end is what did it. Uh, but can use um, essences, can use fossils and harvest to make some pretty reliable Stygian belts. And then I awaken orb smashed a pair of boots together. So in this case, we went elusive on one boot, tailwind on another boot, smashed together, and we got uh, everything on here except for the um, movement speed mod. I then farmed up an Ashling, and you got a really high chance using Ashling Unveil uh, from the Betrayal when you get her to rank 3 in research and then kill Katarina uh, to unveil on your boots. If the suffixes are full, it's going to hit a prefix, and it's a really high chance to get some sort of movement speed mod there. In this case, we got uh, movement speed with cannot be chilled, and then I crafted life. I only just did this at the end of yesterday's stream, so pretty much none of the um, 
video was wearing the movement speed of these boots uh, with that life roll as well. But that's about as good as it gets and that's about as good of a re result as you can realistically try and get. Um, so the elusive is kind of nice, but it's mostly there for the tailwind because we wanted even more speed. And then once again, attack and cast speed on the enchant um, for even more speed. Feels pretty good. Uh, what have we got otherwise? I've got um, a leap slam with life tap so that we don't have to worry about mana. Uh, fortify and faster attacks. Running a stone golem, which pretty much never pressing because he dies anyway. Uh, blood rage just for some frenzies and attack speed. Second wind, flame dash and life tap so that, you know, sometimes you're leap slamming around, sometimes you're dashing over things. Um, you've got ancestral protector. Multi totems, War Chief, and Culling Strike, so that we can place down two different totems for extra buffs. And then down here is Enlighten, Herald of Ash, Blood and Sand, and Hatred. Um, as far as passive tree is concerned, pretty normal, I think. Actually, maybe it's a bit weird, but uh, pure Fizz Sword sort of thing. It gets converted. Uh, I did need one point of strength over here, unfortunately, because uh, getting the character fully resisted and statted out has been a bit of a challenge. I really wanted these nodes for the extra crit and blind. So they're pretty inefficient, but I don't know. What can you do? I really wanted them. Um, got our mana leech solved here. We have a Watcher's Eye only just then put on as well for extra crit on hatred. Not particularly necessary at this point. My crit's not bad, but it could be better. And I've still had one of these, so why not chuck it in there? That made our crit quite a bit nicer. Otherwise, Shadow Tree, and then the um, one cluster, the uh, large cluster isn't that good for our build, but we took it anyway since we really want the medium to smalls, um, and in this case it's a dual wield cluster. We got um, Combat Rhythm, just a bit of attack speed, Martial Prowess, a bit of attack speed, accuracy, damage, uh, Martial Momentum, I'll take these next, once again, attack speed, damage, accuracy, and then... Um, I really needed to up my crit as well, so we've got two crit clusters, same ones basically, actually no, they're not the same ones, uh, pressure points and quick getaway. So pressure points here for a bit of crit double damage, uh, crit attack speed, a um, bit of movement speed as well, uh, ran into some Feast of Flesh and tried to fill out some resists on these as well. Uh, and then this one, I just rolled to do whatever, and in the end we had um, Overwhelming Malice, which gives us a bit of extra Fizz's Chaos. Uh, which isn't super important, but I think it should be better than anything else we can get here as a single notable. Uh, and then pressure points once again. And I just grabbed whatever for the notable here, as long as the uh, jewel had some resists. So I bought this one with some resists, and yeah, it filled out a few. I still need to convert a fire roll into a lightning roll on um, probably my chest, and then I'll be a bit uncapped on cold pretty much forever since uh, my gear is locked in at this point, I think, and just going to use Taste of Hate to get us um, capped most of the time. But uh, yeah, the idea with Raider here is just don't get hit and uh, try and do some of the hitting. Uh, that's currently what the character's looking like, and it's working out. Raider's pretty good, as long as you overcome it with plenty of uh, damage and plenty of zoom. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little Lacerate um, preview and MTX and stuff. I think it's been a very good MTX and Lacerate's still very good for bleed builds. So um, you can't do that if you want a more solid, stable Lacerate to uh, mess around with. But the MTX doesn't feel very bleed, does it? So, I don't know. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope my uh, sickness doesn't make it too bad for the video. And I'll uh, see you next time.